Hi, my name is Jamani Severson Long and I'm the Education Manager at Cincinnati Opera. Today for Opera Storybook Hour, I want to read you the tale of The Magic Flute by Mozart. The Magic Flute is recommended for students second through fifth grade. The story of The Magic Flute tells the tale of Prince Tamino and his journey to save Princess Pamina. Throughout the way, Tamino has to go through a series of trials, but he has a couple of friends who help him. One of his friends is a bird catcher named Papageno. Stay tuned after the reading as baritone June Bojo and accomplice Carol Walker play Papageno's aria, Der Vogler. Enjoy. The Magic Flute. An opera by Mozart, adapted by Kyra Tess. Once upon a time, on a day that seemed like any other, Prince Tamino was out hunting in the forest. It was such a lovely day that he didn't hear the strange sound behind him, a sound that grew louder and louder. Suddenly, snap, sizzle, roar! A huge dragon crashed through the trees, its flaming mouth wide open. Help, help, Tamino shouted as he ran through the forest as fast as he could, the roaring monster just a few steps behind him. I can't run any further, he exclaimed, collapsing to the ground, unconscious. Just then, three gleaming silver arrows struck through the air and struck the dragon. With a thundering crash, the dragon fell dead. From out of the shadows stepped three lovely young ladies, both still in hand. They approached Tamino. Who can he be? They asked each other. Surely he's a prince. We must tell the queen of the night. And away they went. Prince Tamino awoke to find the dragon dead at his feet. Who killed this terrible monster and saved my life? Tamino gasped in surprise. I did, boasted a lively looking fellow covered in feathers. Who are you? Tamino asked. I am Papageno, the bird catcher, the man replied. If it weren't for me, you'd be dead. How'd you do it? Tamino asked. When you're as brave as I am, it's easy, answered Papageno. Kaboom! With a sudden clap of thunder, the queen of the night appeared before them. Nonsense, she snapped with her eyes flashing angrily. My lady slew that dragon. Then the queen softened her voice and smiled sadly at Tamino. Please forgive my anger. Take pity on a poor heartbroken mother. The evil sorcerer Sarastro has stolen my daughter. I do not have the power to rescue her. The queen showed Tamino a portrait of Pamina. The instant Tamino saw Pamina's face, warm and gentle smile, he fell in love. I will find her, he vowed. If you bring her back to me, you may have her hand in marriage, said the queen. Kaboom! And with another clap of thunder, the queen of the night disappeared. As Tamino prepared to leave on his quest, the three ladies approached. Poor Tamino, cooed the first lady. The forest is so dangerous. We must help him, said the second. Tamino, said the third. Here's a gift to protect you on your journey, a magic flute. When you play it, you will charm both man and beast. And for you, Papageno, scolded one of the ladies. As a punishment for claiming that you killed the dragon, you must go with Tamino through the dark forest to Sarastra's Temple of Light. So the two men set off into the dark, dreary forest. Where are we? shivered Papageno. We've been walking for hours. I think we're lost, admitted Tamino, but we must be brave. Maybe some music will lift our spirits. With that, he took out his magic flute and began to play a tune. The ladies had been right, for as the beautiful music drifted through the forest, animals of all kinds crept softly out of their hiding places. Follow us, they said. We will lead you to Sarastro's Temple of Light. There it is, Tamino marveled as he saw the magnificent temple. Oh, impressive, Papageno stammered with fright. You go on ahead, Tamino. I'll just look around. Tamino pounded on the door. Sarastro, even the evil villain, answer me. You stole Pamina from the Queen of the Night, and I have come to rescue her. A priest opened the door and said, You are mistaken, young man. Sarastro is honest and noble. He is protecting Pamina. Her true identity is to inherit Sarastro's kingdom of light. The queen is evil. She wants to destroy everything that is good, even her own daughter. Sarastro is protecting the princess? The queen wants to harm Pamina? How can this be? Tamino wondered out loud. Then he remembered the queen's cruel, cold and cruel eyes. He realized that the priest was telling the truth. He shook his head sadly. I think I've made a terrible mistake, Tamino said to Papageno. 
but his friend was nowhere to be found. Tamino began to play his flute. Lucky Papageno, he had found Pamina. What a funny man you are, she said, laughing with delight. Who are you? I am Papageno. Prince Tamino and I have come to rescue you. It was a most dangerous journey, but nothing frightens me. Then they heard the sound of Tamino's music. Follow me, he said. The moment Pamina saw the prince, she fell in love. But before either of them could say a word, a gong sounded from somewhere deep within the temple, and the wise and powerful Sarastro greeted them. Right away, he saw how much the prince and the princess loved each other. Pamina, I will give you my blessing to marry Tamino, he said, his eyes twinkling, but only if he can pass three tests, one of silence, one of patience, and one of courage. When Papageno heard that, he jumped. What about me? I want a wife too. Very well, said Sarastra with a laugh. If you pass the test, then you will find love as well. A little Papageno. First was the test of silence. You mean no talking? That's easy, declared Papageno. But as he spoke, a mysterious mist arose around Tamino and Papageno. The queen of the night's three ladies emerged, as graceful and as lovely as ever. Come, Tamino and Papageno, sing us a song, they teased. A song, certainly. And without thinking, Papageno began to sing like a bird. Tamino shook his head to warn his friend and played his flute to keep from speaking. The gentle music soothed him and the ladies vanished. Tamino had passed the first test, but alas, poor Papageno had not. Next, a table of delicious food was set before them. Oh, good, Papageno exclaimed. Something to eat while we wait for the next test. He had barely finished, speak he had barely finished speaking before he started eating, smacking his lips and guzzling his drink greedily. Tamino was hungry too. The food looked delicious, but he thought this must be the test of patience. So again, he played his flute and soon he forgot his hunger. Tamino passed the second test, but Papageno failed again. There was one more test to pass, the test of courage, a trial by fire and water. Suddenly, a huge wall of flame appeared before Tamino. I must be brave, Tamino trembled. Tamino, wait, Pamina called and came to his side. I will endure this test with you. Play your flute and the sweet music will protect us. Tamino felt his courage return. He held Pamina's hand and lifted the flute to his lips. He played a song and together they stepped through the flames unharmed. They found themselves standing before an enormous waterfall. Tamina was not afraid. He began to play his flute. The water slowed, then stopped. Tamino and Pamina walked through, hand in hand. The tests were over. Tamino had passed all three. Sarastro came forward and put his arms around their shoulders. Tamino and Pamina, I give you my blessing to marry. Together you will inherit my throne of light and bring much wisdom and happiness to the world. The evil queen of the night will have no power in this joyful land. Hi, wailed the queen, who had been secretly watching. Her cry echoed through the land as she fled the, with her ladies to the eternal darkness. But what about Papageno? Congratulations, Tamino, he sighed sadly. You and Pamina will be very happy together. As for me, I'd pluck my plumage for a sweetheart of my own. But Sarastro, with mischief in his eyes, patted the bird catcher's back. There now, Papageno, he said. You failed the test, it is true. But I think the world is better off with a cheerful bird catcher rather than a sad one. So I have one more test for you. An old woman hobbled over. Her face was lined with wrinkles and her hair was gray and stringy. Her rags were old and tattered as cobwebs. Will you marry me, Papageno? She croaked. She smiled, showing her missing teeth. Oh dear, oh dear. She is hardly the kind of wife I imagined, Papageno muttered to herself. But maybe she's not so bad. Maybe she can catch birds. Maybe she can cook. And she surely is better than no wife at all. Papageno made up his mind. Yes, I will marry you. Poof! 
With a flash of light and a fluttering of feathers, the old woman disappeared. In her place, there stood a beautiful young maiden dressed in feathers. This is Papagena, Sarastro announced with a smile. The bird catcher's bride. Papagena's eyes were as round as coins. Papagena? He stuttered. Oh, I am the luckiest bird catcher in the world. And so not one, but two couples happily received Tarasro's blessing for marriage. As the sun rose over the hills, the four friends walked off to a new life of peace and happiness with the music of the magic flute to lead their way. The end. Der Vogel fänge bin ich ja, sie zu sich heißer Hupsasa. Ich Vogel fänge bin bekannt, bei alt und jung im ganzen Land. Weiß mit dem Lotte umzugehen und mich aufs Pfeifen zu verstehen. Drum kann ich froh und lustig sein, denn alle Vögel sind ja mein. Der Vogelfänge bin ich ja stets lustig, heißer Hupsasa. Ich Vogelfänge bin bekannt, bei alt und jung im ganzen Land. Als viel Mädchen möchte ich, ich bin sie du sind weiß viel mich. Da schwelte ich sie bei mir ein und alle Mädchen werden mein. Wenn alle Mädchen wären mein, so tauschte ich Brautzucke ein. Die Welche mir am liebsten wär, dir gäb ich gleich den Zucke her. Und küsste sie mich zärtlich dann, wenn sie mein Weib und ich hiel mein. Sie schlief an meiner Seite ein, ich liegte wie ein Kind sie ein. <lacht>